A popular topic of discussion for my channel, and many other Lithuania-focused channels, are all the cultural differences and the cultural do's and don'ts of Lithuania. I've done a video in the past about the social do's and don'ts of this country, and it was generally well accepted. Well, this video is a bit of an update and includes a special guest, Lina. Lina is a professional tour guide from the company Baltic Odyssey. She's a Lithuanian with some experience of French culture and knowledge of the French language, so I'm sure she's had her fair share of encountering differences across very different cultures. And so without further delay, let's go over some of the cultural do's and don'ts of Lithuania as a way to avoid annoying or angering the locals, and perhaps even getting them to like you. So the main thing I would say is that we are not uh, Russian, uh, that Lithuanian language does not uh, resemble uh, Russian language nor Polish. Uh, so I would say this is the main thing. Uh, this is the main thing that can get a Lithuanian angry. A lot of Lithuanians uh, died uh, during the struggle from in for, for independence. So uh, we have a strong feeling of uh, national identity. So this would be the main thing not to say that uh, Lithuanians are Russian or that Lithuanian language uh, resemble Russian or Polish. And uh, actually Lithuanian uh, is one of the oldest uh, languages in the world. It comes from Sanskrit, so even it's not in the same branch as Russian or uh, Slavic languages or Polish. Yep, even in my few years living here, it is so apparent that Lithuanians want to distance themselves from their past of being occupied by the Soviet Union. I've participated in a few activities, mainly geared to tourists, and I would say that 75% of the time, there's at least one tourist in the group who asks if the Lithuanian language is similar to Russian. That's bad enough, but then some go as far as insisting that it sounds like Russian, and that is sure to make a Lithuanian person's blood boil, even if they don't show it outwardly. I suppose Lithuanians in the tourist industry will be used to this, and have maybe developed a thicker skin to tolerate these questions. And I would go so far as to say, it's their job to kindly and politely educate foreigners about the differences. For what it's worth, I can understand how, to an uneducated foreigner who only has experience speaking English, Lithuanian might sound like any other Central or Eastern European language. It's due to a lack of education, exposure, and ear training. But if you consider yourself in that category of people, just know that Baltic languages, like Latvian and Lithuanian, are in a completely separate family from Slavic languages like Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, etc. And hopefully this lovely graphic helps you to understand that. And again, this desire to disassociate from Russia has everything to do with the history of Russian occupation in Lithuanian lands. And of course, what's currently going on with Russia and Ukraine isn't helping the situation. But okay, moving on, let's see what Lena has to say next. So the second one uh, is, I would say, no touching. <laughs> I had some several tours from people from the south, from Spain, from south of France, and people there, when they are talking, they, they are... They, they touch you, so by when they explain something, they sometimes touch your arm. And for me, it was super strange. And uh, this man kept touching me. Uh, so, so for me, it was like my boundary. Uh, I wanted to walk a little bit further. It was very, very uh, strange for me. Hmm. Physical contact. This isn't something that has really occurred to me. But at the same time, I'm not a touchy person who makes a lot of physical contact with people I don't know well. And so because of that, I just don't have too much to add. Also, if you greet somebody new, uh, maybe it would be better to do a handshake. We uh, kiss uh, only with the closest uh, uh, family members. So like the appropriate way to say hello would be a handshake, not like in France or Spain where uh, you kiss to say hello. To add to what Lena said, I can say that one of my first experiences in France was so awkward when this female friend of a friend, who I was meeting for the very first time, went in for the double cheek kiss. And at that point, I had already begun to move towards a handshake. Yep, Lithuanians do not have kisses as first greetings and introductions. But moving on. Another thing that is uh, annoying, although it's true, uh, so Lithuanians don't like to, uh, for you to say uh, that we are a post-Soviet country, uh, that we're Eastern Europe. We want to be ad identified as uh, Northern Europe. So uh, if you keep bragging about the past, about the, uh, like where can I see Soviet buildings, uh, like Lenin, it transfers me. So you have to be careful because some people uh, don't want that. And uh, Govinus made a video about uh, Lithuania 
Slovenia recently uh, that what you think of Eastern Europe is so very standard thing like uh, men with Adidas uh, trainers all day long spitting uh, eating sunflower seeds so it was a huge controversial thing in Lithuania a lot of people were mad because we don't want to see uh, uh, be seen as Eastern Europe and uh, so we want to be to get rid of this the Soviet past so it was very interesting to to see the different opinions oof this Eastern Europe Northern Europe thing it's a complex topic I made a whole video about this and it's messy only because such terms can mean different things either physical geography or culture because to me I associate Eastern or Northern Europe with being a physical location and a geographical term which has nothing to do with culture history or values and so it was weird for me to hear someone say we were Eastern European but we are more and more becoming Northern European in my geographically minded brain I'm thinking uh yeah it doesn't work like that but hearing that kind of thing makes me realize that people just associate Eastern Europe with Russia and being behind the Iron Curtain but if to you Lithuania is Eastern Europe then maybe think a little before you say this to a Lithuanian because I guess you should be ready to defend yourself and why you think it should be categorized as Eastern Europe. Northeastern Europe might be a safer term to use, and I don't think anyone will get offended if you say Northern Europe, even if it's nowhere near as far north as Sweden and Finland. And then addressing what Lena had to say about Soviet culture, yeah, I personally call it something like Soviet nostalgia. I think there are a lot of tourists from the West who are fascinated by Soviet history and culture, so if you're in Lithuania to look for this kind of stuff, do tread lightly and be respectful. I think it's okay to have some curiosity about this chapter of history, but admiring it or embracing it as something cool, well, that is generally looked down upon. Many Lithuanian families suffered under the authoritarian government of the USSR and would not appreciate people coming to the country to admire relics of Lithuania's Soviet past. And then this next point has to do with food. Uh, since I work a lot with French tourists, I know what they don't like and they like. So they like everybody likes pink soup, uh, but not everybody likes gira and sepeliny. So although I know that there's different tastes, but it's annoying for me and I get a little bit offended if you say that sepeliny are bad. So please don't do that. I think this point is more about expressing yourself respectfully. And I would say this lesson applies to travel in general. You shouldn't ever call a food nasty or disgusting, awful, or anything along those lines. All you have to say is, look, it's not for me, or it's not quite my taste, or something else that makes it a subjective statement rather than an objective value judgment about the food. Because we're all allowed to like and dislike different foods, right? And so on that note, full disclosure on my end, I'm actually not a fan of tsepeline in its, um, how would you say? like fresh from the pot form. I find this version too starchy and heavy, and yeah, it's just not for me. But what I can say is that I enjoy the fried cepeline, the ones that have been kept overnight, cut in half, and fried to be crispy. Now that's a variation that I quite enjoy. But moving on. Ooh, one very weird thing. So some in some countries, you don't take your shoes off when you go in somebody's apartment. Uh, so again, in France and, uh, and this way, uh, this uh, weekend I was a wedding and people were not used to uh, that, that there was a huge wedding in, in somebody's apartment, a huge apartment and people were not prepared to take off their shoes. So if you go to, to someone, to a Lithuanian's apartment, please take your shoes off, wear uh, new socks w without holes in, it, in them. But for me, it's super weird to see like people going outside in the street and then coming at your home and uh, still using their outdoors shoes. I've always had a shoes off household growing up. I know some friends who are shoes on people and it is always weird to me. So I guess in this respect, I'm glad that Lithuanian shoes off culture aligns with what I'm used to. What's your opinion on wearing shoes inside someone's home? And you're okay with all of that going into your home? Well, my dog was just rolling in a dead animal. I, I'm good. And next up is a point about making small talk. Another don't would be uh, at the beginning of a relationship or if you don't know a Lithuanian is excessive small talk. So for us also, it's very strange. Just do a little bit of a small talk. We're quite introverted. Uh, one uh, one colleague of mine, I just met her and uh, she's not from Lithuania and she started talking about her whole life, uh, her family, her husband and a lot of intimate things and for me it was super strange and I didn't know what to respond so 
yeah, just start easy with the small talk. <laughs> now this is a slightly new one for me. Not that I make excessive small talk, but I am used to engaging in some small talk. So I remember this one time, I ran into a guy at the supermarket that I knew, and I started to make a tiny bit of small talk. I had worked with him before at an acting agency here in Vilnius. I could sense the awkwardness of the whole encounter at the supermarket, and from that I learned my lesson. If you pass by or encounter someone in public that you know, just say a quick hello, or maybe it's just less stressful for everyone involved to keep your head down and pretend like you don't notice. I guess it all really depends on how you know them. Funny enough though, I ran into Lina one day while going out on a walk with my son. I got to meet her and her husband, and they got to meet my son, but I did make sure to keep it short and let them move on with their day. So how do you get to know someone better if you're going to avoid small talk with the early encounters? Well, don't refuse an invitation if a Lithuanian uh, invites you to your home, so they wouldn't understand. You have to give a good alibi or invite your, yourself. So if somebody invites you, uh, you, you should go or, uh, or like uh, reschedule because it's very offensive not to go. And so I guess this is more of a do than a don't. And to me, this makes sense. And I think it applies to many other cultures. If someone is willing to invite you into their home, it's a gesture of openness and willingness to connect no matter what the culture. So naturally, you should appreciate the gesture and act accordingly. And finally, just a few more do's from Lina. Like if you are invited to, to somebody's home, especially if it's older generation, they will do a lot of uh, uh, food. So uh, make sure you don't put in it, it in yourself because you will have to eat a lot. So try finishing everything that you are given and uh, ask for some more. Uh, you won't even uh, have time to ask, they will put it in your plate. But make sure to eat uh, what you are given. And also drinking, it would be offensive uh, not, not to drink. Uh, and one thing um, which, I, which I like a lot, Lithuanians love flowers and we give flowers in, on multiple occasions. Uh, 1st of September, on birthdays, even to men, like if for your man colleague we give flowers. So also make sure you, you give flowers for weddings also, it's very important, don't forget white flowers. And like in most countries, you should give an uneven number for happy occasions and even number for, for sad occasions. I think the only potential issue is dietary restrictions. You might need to make someone aware early on if you're vegan or vegetarian, or if you don't drink alcohol for whatever reason. Otherwise, do try to accept what is offered to you, which I guess means not showing up to someone's home with an already very full stomach, since you'll be expected to eat something. But yeah, that's it. At least that's everything that Lina has to say. And so if you happen to be watching this in preparation for a visit to Lithuania, well, I can tell you that Lina is a fantastic professional tour guide through her company, Baltic Odyssey. If you're interested in her services, be sure to check out her website, balticodyssey.eu. You can also find her on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'll leave all the links in the video description. My huge thanks to Lina for this collaboration. If you're Lithuanian, and I know many of you are, please let me know in the comment section if these things align with your own experiences and expectations, or if there are some differences. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. The, the Iron Wolf is the symbol of Vilnius City. That's why you can see one here. It's well, Vilnius basketball team, a mascot, and as you know, Lithuania, the second religion is basketball. So it's the symbol of uh, Vilnius. And here is also our national cake, uh, shakotis, uh, celebration cake.